If you wanted to create a backup of your workbook and you're like me, I usually just go ahead and click on File, go to Save As. The name of my workbook is Create Backup. If I want to create a copy of that, I just go ahead and add the number two. So I have my original Create Backup and then a copy of it or my backup of the Create Backup. Create Backup number two, click Save. Well, there's another way you can do this. Let me click Cancel. Is you can use the Always Create Backup feature that Excel has. What that does is that you'll have your original file and when you turn this on, it'll create a copy of it, of the file, and the name of the copy will always precede or lead with backup and then the name of your file, like backup of create backup. So to turn this feature on, just come up here, click on file. It's really easy. Go to save as, click on tools, go down to general options, and there it is. Check the box, always create backup. Click OK. Be sure to save it so we can apply that and click yes. And then once you do that, right now, automatically Excel created a second file named backup of and then the name of the file. Let's go ahead and see that, close out of it. It's in my exercises folder. Double click to open it up. So the name of my original file is create backup. Now I just need to find the uh, file with the name of backup of, there it is, backup of, then the name of my file. And it's got the extension .xlk. Of course it's got a funny looking icon here. And when I talk about extensions, the name of the file that we gave it, which was Create Backup, has an extension of the name that the operating system will recognize what type of uh, program to open up this file in. Basically, all .xls or .xlsx opens up in Excel. In fact, if you come down here, there's a .txt file. That opens up in Notepad. In any case, if you want to learn more about extensions or you can't see your extensions, then you want to watch my Windows 7 uh, training video. I talk all about it, how to turn them on, and how to avoid deleting the extensions, because if you do that and you try to open up the file, the operating system is going to go, um, okay, I don't know what program to open this up in, which is a good point. If you can't find the uh, program to open up the file in, then you may want to contact the person and say, okay, what program does this file belong to, or what's the extension, and go ahead and make the change there. In any case, watch that training video. So I've got the original file here, then I have the backup of it, double click to open it up. Even Excel has a hard time admitting that what we just created is going to be safe. It could be corrupted, but we know it's fine. We created it. Go ahead and click yes to open it up, and there it is. Just a copy of the original Create Backup uh, workbook. So if I go ahead and close out of here, Click on File. Let me go to my recent files here, which was Create Backup. And then, of course, there's the uh, copy of it, the .xlk. Let's go ahead and open up the original. Let me go ahead and make a change. When I click Save, it's not going to back that up. See if this makes sense. I have my original file with the change that I made. And then I have my backup that's not going to have that change, at least not with the first save, because that's what the backup is for. If I didn't mean to make the change, at least I can go to the backup and not have that uh, data or that number one entered in there. So if I go ahead and close out, go File to open up the backup and say yes, it's not there, okay? But it's always the second save that will go ahead and take a snapshot of the uh, original document. Let me show you, because I think that's better. Let me go ahead and close out of here. File, let me go back to the original document, open that up, and let's add another number. So when I click Save Now, it's going to go ahead and go, oh, what was the uh, document before we made changes and saved? Well, it had one in there, okay? Didn't have two, it had one. So when I close out and I go to the backup, let me go to the backup of the Create Backup and say yes, it'll have that before we click Save. All the changes up until we clicked on Save the second time. So go ahead and make all your changes, click Save, and anything before that that wasn't in the original backup will be added. So it's always the uh, second save or the next save. Which brings up a good question. What if I'm in that workbook, the original, close out, and I pull it up and I make some changes. Let me just go ahead and add a bunch of changes here. And I click save once. Well, it'll take a snapshot before the changes and add that. But if I click save twice, remember it's the second save, now it's going to include everything. So you don't want to click Save twice. Just click it once. Don't get Save happy. Just make your changes, click Save once, and walk away slowly. Close out of the workbook. Because 
Now that I click Save Twice, let me close out and open up the backup and say yes, it took everything in. Okay. So the uh, Always Create Backup is a good feature that when you make any changes and you save it once, you'll have your original file, then you'll have the backup to always revert to in case if you didn't mean to add those changes. Unless, of course, you uh, double click on Save, then you have your original file the same as your backup. But if that's what you wanted to do, then kind of defeats the purpose. And then, of course, if you want to remove that, just, you know, File, Save As, Tools to General Options, uncheck it, click Okie Dokie. Go ahead and, well, let me select the file, the original file, create backup, click Save, override it, close out of everything, and it's still there. I mean, I can go ahead and right click on it and delete it. That's fine. And I'm back to my uh, file with, with no Always Create Backup feature. Double click and there we go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you get online access to all my training. Or for downloads and DVDs, please visit me at dreamforce.us.